Hey guys and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. So today we are starting a garden from scratch. We are starting our raised bed garden in our new gardening space. Um, if you recall a few videos ago, we did announce that we sold the house and we are starting from scratch. Um, we currently are staying with my grandmother um, who has this big open backyard and wanted to start a garden anyway. So we will be starting a raised bed garden in this space. Now, before we get started, I did want to say there is, um, there has been a life update. So Alan and I over the weekend did get engaged. Um, so if you see me wearing an engagement ring <laughs> that looks like this, uh, that is why. So we are getting married in 2022 in March. Um, so of course we will continue to incorporate that into the channel. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up because of course we are gardening and I work a lot with my hands. So if you see that, that is why. All right. <laughs> All right, so in addition to that, I do have a checklist um, that I have put together for you guys. So if you want the actual steps on everything we are doing um, to start this garden bed from scratch, then I will leave the link in the description for you. It looks something like this. I'll leave it on the screen here. Um, you can go ahead and download that um, via the link below in the description box. And there's a blog post with all of these steps as well as exactly how much it costs to start this garden with all of the breakdown and everything. So if you wanna go check that out, I will leave that also in the description bar below. So the first thing we did was to measure out our gardening space so we knew exactly how much we had to work with. We decided that our garden would go up against the fence to maximize the backyard space and the overall dimensions of the raised bed ended up being 30 feet long and two feet wide, making it easy to reach from one side of the bed to the other. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my corner posts and I'm going to cut them down to about 11 inches. Now, you can use 2x4s. Um, these are just scrap wood that I have laying around, but 2x4s, 2x3s works just the same. Um, these are actually 4x4s, um, so they are a little bit sturdier, but either way, my previous garden had 2x3s and they work just as fine. Um, so I'm gonna cut these down to 11 inches, and 11 inches is going to be because the width of these, um, which are just fence boards, these are five and a half inches each. Um, and so there will be two of them, one stacked right on top of the other, and then my corner post will hold them both in place. So I'm going to cut down my corner post to 11 inches and then go from there, cutting down the rest of my fence boards. Okay, so I've cut my posts um, for my height of 11 inches for each of my boxes. Um, and realistically, it's only going to be one big box. Um, it is going to be a 30 foot garden bed um, going from one corner of the house to the other corner of the house like we measured out earlier. Um, so the entire length will be 30 feet. It will be held together um, in joints across, um, I think it's every six feet, just so that you know it doesn't completely come apart because 30 feet is a very long width. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fence post and I'm going to cut these into two feet um, because that will be the width of my garden bed. So the entire raised bed will be 30 feet. Um, it will come two feet off of the fence that's back there so that I can still reach over and actually you know, pick my vegetables and harvest and do whatever I need to do in the garden. Um, and then it will be 11 inches high, which I have my posts already for. So now we have our four by four posts, which are cut down to 11 inches. And then we have our fence posts, which are two feet long. We just have our other fence boards here so that it is a, a flat environment um, and we're not cutting and nailing down and screwing down in the grass. So we're gonna take our fence boards and we're going to align them directly on top of our, our fence posts. That will be the corners. Um, and we're going to basically just pop two screws in each one so that they are completely aligned um, and there's no gaps in between for any of the dirt to come out. All right, so that is one of our four sides. Um, that is the two foot side and then we'll create another one just like this um, and then we are joining it by the other, uh, the other six foot boards that will end up being 30 feet total. All right, so we have our two sides, one over here um, and the other right there. Um, so we've separated them and we have our another plank 
and we're going to go ahead and screw on our six foot boards now these are uh, these are pressure treated pine fence pickets I think they are yes uh, fence pickets that have not been cut or anything so they are completely six foot um, and they are going to create the front and back of our boxes So you can see how as we add on the other sides, the box starts coming together. Um, so this will be one end of our 30 feet. We'll continue adding on to that side um, until we get to our 30 foot, which is somewhere over there past that tree. Um, that is the end of our property line um, where the AC unit ends and the house is going to be flush with the boxes. Um, so we're gonna keep going. And then on the inside of these, we will add in an additional board to kind of straighten them out. Alright guys, so now it is the next day. We finished up pretty late at night and so it was really dark outside, but here is the finished frame. Um, it is 30 feet across, 2 feet wide um, from the back of the fence here to the front of the, um, of the box. And then we put these little support joists in here so that they wouldn't bow, right, because we didn't want them to start kind of like opening up. So we just made sure that everything is kind of, you know, sturdy. Um, so we put a few of those in all the way across. Um, and then reinforced a few of them with extra ones. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of weeds in here and grass and everything. Um, and so we are gonna take a whole bunch of cardboard and put it down now so that everything does not come up through our garden. So I have my two or three layers of cardboard all the way across. I tried to double layer it and triple layer it and just make sure that if there are any gaps, right, that they would be completely covered. So you see a gap here, but that is actually on top of another layer of cardboard underneath. So I tried to make sure that it was pretty even. Um, there will still be weeds coming up through this. That's just the nature of the beast. And there were weeds in my previous garden, um, but hopefully this will prevent a lot of it. So now on to make our trellis. Our trellis is going to go up the back wall um, of the fence so that we can grow vertically that way. Yesterday we finished putting down um, the cardboard inside all of the boxes and we also finished building the trellis so the trellises are supported um, by this back frame and with the and with the extra um, cuts that we made we just kind of put these little arrows in place so that they're a little bit more sturdy and then one on the corner over there um, and then I took this like plastic chicken wire it's like the garden mesh fencing thing it's green um, I just got out of tractor supply and then all of the supplies list um, and all the costs will be in the blog so you can go check that out I'll leave the link in the description so today is our final step we will be actually filling the boxes all right and so we are using basically two ingredients we're using peat moss and we are using organic compost now this is I believe cow manure compost um, you can use whatever kind of compost you want but I also have some of our homemade compost that I can use um, in addition to this 
All right, so in the past I have used um, peat moss, I've used compost, and I've actually used perlite in my raised beds as well. Um, what I've learned throughout the years is that the more compost I put in, it looks like the, the plants and vegetables do a little bit better um, because there's more nutrients. Now, I, I used to recommend doing a one-third, one-third, one-third ratio, which is actually what I use for my seed starting mix now. I have an entire video on how I make my seed starting soil, um, which is one-third compost, one-third uh, peat moss, and one-third perlite. So that, that usually works out really well for, um, for so small seeds, but I do um, transplant a lot of my already started seed starts into these boxes, and so they do require a little bit more uh, nutrients and a little bit more compost um, and a little bit just a little bit something to like give them that initial boost so what I've been doing lately and it works out really really well um, and I've started many gardens like this for my friends and family is one half peat moss and one half compost and then I do kind of like a no dig garden bed um, it is a you can't see it because it's all blown out but um, in the raised beds behind me um, I will fill them the first time and then at the end of the season slash beginning of the next season because here in Florida they they all Kind of like run into each other all the seasons um, I will top dress with compost so I won't add any more peat moss I'll just keep adding my homemade compost at the end of the season and then continue planting in that and then every season add in more compost so it's much more of a um, no dig raised bed method So the garden is finally done. I mixed up all of the peat moss and compost and then I added an additional uh, top dressing layer of compost. It's probably around two inches or so just to provide some additional nutrients into the soil. Um, one of the main reasons I went with this garden layout, right, which is um, behind the you know, behind the actual yard up against the fence is because um, there's a lot of morning light. Right now it's a little uh, cloudy and overcast, but usually, and even this morning, um, I did see that like that line of light coming onto the garden. So at around uh, 7 30, 8 a.m., this part of the garden is already light and it gets pretty much full sun until around four o'clock in the afternoon, um, which is perfect for growing vegetables. Now, in your own garden, you may have a different layout. You might have, you know, boxes like I had before um, with spaces in between them I chose to do this route um, one because of the lighting situation and two also because we still wanted to have a backyard to enjoy you know we have a fence on either side and we want Milo to be able to run around and the kids to be able to run around and all of that stuff so we opted to do this garden against the fence um, it is total um, two feet wide by 30 feet long which gives me pretty much a good gardening space. Um, it's definitely not as big as the garden I had before in the old house, and it's not as big as the garden that I will have in the new dream house, but it is a pretty decent amount of gardening space. In the next video I put up, I will be sharing with you everything that I am gonna be growing for the fall garden. And if you wanna see the raised bed chalices that I built for my previous garden, which are definitely a lot more sturdy, um, a little bit more expensive, but will definitely hold a lot more of those heavy vegetables, then I will leave that video here somewhere. You can go check that out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.